Ever since Chuck Taylor teamed up with Converse to make a basketball shoe in 1922, some of the greatest successes and innovations in the sneaker industry can be attributed to the success of athlete partnerships and signature models with those athletes. And while partnerships with musical artists are nothing new, the sneaker industry hadn't begun until fairly recently to truly invest in the potential of partnering with musical artists. For proof of this, Look no further than Kanye's frustrations with his Nike partnership. Love or hate the guy, he had some good points in comparing Nike's refusal to pay him royalties to the generous royalties that Michael Jordan had received for his signature sneakers. Considering how much influence and power Kanye has attained in the industry since leaving Nike, it seems like Nike underestimated the pure cash value of having him in their corner. I doubt Nike is going to make that mistake again. We may very well see the partnership blueprint within the sneaker industry shift from mostly athletes to more musicians, artists, designers, and celebrities who take on all of those roles. Which brings us to the topic of today's video, Travis Scott and his sneakers. Between the skyrocketing popularity of Scott's music with 2018's Astro World, his enigmatic style, and the fact that he had a kid with Kylie Jenner, it makes sense for the sneaker industry to be handing him opportunities. The beginning of Travis Scott's journey into the sneaker world started in 2013 during his mixtape era. He signed a partnership with Reebok, and while he didn't get any huge collab sneaker drops in his time with Reebok, he featured in a Reebok classic leather promotional campaign, chiefly rocking the blue and gray classic leathers designed by graffiti artist Dash. No sneakers with his name on them yet, but this shine from Reebok primed him for bigger projects with other brands. After signing with Reebok, it took four more years for Cactus Jack to get into his first big fashion collab. Taking design inspiration from his hometown of Houston, Texas, Scott teamed up with the fashion brand that he'd been wearing since his teen years. The Helmet Lang and Travis Scott collection launched in January of 2017, and alongside jackets, shirts, pants, and shorts came high and low top versions of Scott's first ever signature sneaker. The tongue of these sneakers sported a bull logo that could also be found on the collection's other pieces. Sitting below helmet Lang branding, a leather strap lines the heel and another sits atop the leather vamp. Scott had stated in interviews that he'd always been a fan of the straps that could be found in classic helmet Lang designs and that he intended to bring them back in this collection. Aside from the straps and a little visual flare in the hexagonal eyelids, a simple nylon upper and the rubber sole make for a fairly understated sneaker. Both high and low top versions came in a choice of either black or coffee colorways. The high tops retailed for $596 while the lows went for $395. Later on that year, a new Travis Scott sneaker was announced. And while a bit of a tease, this announcement marked a huge step for Scott in the sneaker world. In July of 2017, the Jordan Trunner LX Cactus Jack was announced on Air Jordan's website, followed by a super bare bones interview in which the shoe itself was barely discussed. This one stayed friends and family, and to many sneakerheads who were staying up to date on this one, it wasn't a surprise that it never released. However, only a month after the initial announcement, one pair of these was found for 55 bucks in a New York City thrift store. What would you do if you found these for 55 bucks in a thrift store? Let me know in the comments down below. Next up in the list of LaFlame sneakers is the Travis Scott and Nike Air Force One. This was Scott's first official release in collaboration with Nike, and it was a big one. This signature Air Force One dropped in late 2017 as part of the AF100 collection, which celebrated the Air Force One's 35th anniversary and included sneakers from industry legends and designers such as Virgil Abloh and Errolson Hugh. Unlike the typical leather of an Air Force One, Scott's version came in a full canvas body with a classy looking rubber gum sole. And while this sneaker looks fairly tame at a glance, especially for a Travis Scott design, a closer look will reveal the crazy details we've come to expect from him. The piping material that connects all of the panels of the upper looks plain white, until you pop it with the flash and see the rainbow colored 3M reflective. Two different removable patches sit atop the laces, one with the Cactus Jack logo, the other with a cartoon caricature of Travis. Underneath each of those patches sits two Dubrays in the shape of Travis's grills, and under those there's a tiny embroidered Nike swoosh. The top Tongue, also canvas, rocks a nylon tag with the barely visible upside down Nike logo and is lined in more reflective 3M material. Similarly, the heel is lined with a 3M strip that sits below another upside down Nike Air logo. The red insoles bear the Nike logo and the text Travis Scott in a backwards font. The most outstanding and wild part of this sneaker though is that the four raised chrome Nike's 
swooshes are attached via Velcro and are interchangeable with other options included in the box. Either this flame pattern swoosh or a diamond studded swoosh. On release, this model retailed at $150. It's one of my favorites out of all the pairs we're looking at today. It's classy looking, but has a lot of character. Half a year later, in June of 2018, Travis would get his first ever Jordan, and it's a big one. The Travis Scott Air Jordan 4 Cactus Jack retailed at $225. And with the shoes colors, it paid homage to Travis's favorite football team growing up, the Houston Oilers, known today as the Tennessee Titans. The primary color is the baby blue of the suede upper, while the accenting colors are black and red. The left sneaker has Travis Scott branding, a tag on the back of the tongue with the familiar backwards name and a big Cactus Jack logo on the heel, while the right sneaker sports Jordan branding, its tongue tag reading Air Jordan backwards, and a nice big Jumpman on the heel. Similar branding can be seen on the hang tag of each sneaker, Jumpman and Cactus Jack logos respectively. Both tongues rock a fat Jumpman patch with the cursive flight script. How would you guys rate this sneaker in the lineage of Travis Scott collabs? Also appearing in 2018, the next couple pairs of sneakers are more Jordan 4s, but these two were unreleased and only ever really seen on the feet of Travis Scott or his friends and family. These two pairs are the Travis Scott and Jordan 4 Purple Suede and the Travis Scott and Jordan 4 Olive. It looks like a couple pairs of the Purple Suedes have floated around online, but as far as I can tell, the Olives are truly unattainable. The only good news I have for any of you who might be fiending for a pair of the Olives is that the Jordan 4 Taupe Haze is a pretty close lookalike. The Travis Scott Air Force One sale is pretty easy to cover because it's similar to Scott's Air Force One from the AF100 collection. This model simply has a more yellow tan color, but all the same details. The color change makes sense to me. I've heard that the white canvas of the first Air Force One is a total scuff and stained magnet. So maybe the off-white color here helps to keep the cell from looking dirty. The following year saw the release of the Travis Scott Jordan 33, Scott's first shot at designing a modern basketball sneaker. These sold for $200 and didn't get that much love from the sneaker community. These have some interesting details, like the window in the outsole or the pull to eject cord, but they still didn't make much of a splash. So are these hideous or what? Um, I'm curious to know what you guys think. Do any of you guys actually own a pair of these? Um, let me know in the comments down below. During this Grammy performance, Travis rocked a special, never before seen Air Jordan 1 low. Green and red colors, backwards Nike swoosh on the lateral sides, and green frayed medial swooshes teased at something brand new, but this sneaker never released. What did release though on the sneakers app at the same moment during the Grammys was the Travis Scott Air Jordan 1 High. This is the first time sneakerheads could get their hands on the backwards swoosh. It's another sneaker that presents a fairly muted aesthetic, but in typical Travis Scott fashion, this J has plenty of hidden details. We're gonna keep this list rolling instead of covering all the little details, but I gotta say that folding ankle pocket is a dope touch. It's worth mentioning that pretty much all of these sneakers came with unique packaging. Most of the time, there's Cactus Jack branding present on the box, and sometimes even on the paper inside the box. The pink paper that comes in the Air Jordan 1 box is a pretty dope example of this type of attention to detail that keeps these sneakers feeling hype and exclusive compared to just a normal Jordan Retro. In July of 2019, a Travis Scott version of the Air Jordan 1 Low would finally be released and it ended up looking a lot more like the high top version we just discussed than the version we first saw the flame rocking during his Grammy performance. The backwards lateral swoosh is present again and much like the high top version, there's some uniquely placed Cactus Jack branding like this offset logo on the tongue. These came with three extra pairs of laces, red, black, and pink, providing both flat wax and oval lace options. Scott's partnership with Nike and Jordan brand continues to thrive as we go on down the list. Next up is the Travis Scott Air Jordan 6, which was first seen on Scott's feet during the halftime show of the 2019 Super Bowl. The original olive colorway dropped in October of 2019 for $250. 3M hits pop out from the preparations in the upper, and a bit of Cactus Jack branding accompanies plenty of Jumpman logos. Some new stuff was incorporated as well. Like this is the first Travis Scott sneaker to sport glow in the dark, which we see in the outsole and a large stash pocket on the lateral upper of each sneaker was a bold addition never before seen on a Jordan 6. Fun fact about this release is that a color matched Cactus Jack and Jordan apparel collection dropped alongside the sneaker on the same day. Before the next retail release of a Cactus Jack Jordan 6, a yellow friends and family colorway would be spotted on the feet of Migos member Offset. These were never released and very few pairs were ever put into circulation. And while Travis Scott does have another version of the Jordan 6 for us to cover, we've got a couple more releases to go first. This video is sponsored by Hefe Lux. More than eight years have passed since boost return technology hit the market. And let's be real guys, 
It's one of the most comfortable, if not the most comfortable cushioning technology available today. We all know quality control has been an issue for some brands lately. And along with QC going down, most modern releases come with a default flimsy insole. If you're anything like me, Comfortability is the deal breaker when it comes to the sneakers I want to wear for the day. No matter how dope a sneaker is in my collection, I'll literally avoid wearing it if it's not comfortable. That was of course before I tried Hefe Lux, literally boost technology in any sneakers you own. Grab yourself a pair and cure yourself of the anxieties around wearing your uncomfortable Jordan 1s for long periods at a time. Go to hefelux.com and don't forget to use the promo code nacho at checkout for a 15% discount on us. All right guys, back to the video. One more collab would drop in 2019, the Travis Scott and Nike Air Force One Cactus Jack. This one's definitely interesting and you're likely to either love it or hate it. There's a lot to dig into on this sneaker, but we're gonna go over it real quick since we've got so many sneakers to cover today. One tan duck canvas swoosh, one camo swoosh, a long suede toe, soft leather vamp, crazy multicolored panels of the upper. One wild thing is the Cactus Jack logo that's stylized like a death metal band name. It's present on the uppers of the shoe and also on the box. I've never seen that kind of death metal font used on a sneaker before. A zip up corduroy lace shroud, button on straps on the heel, mint stitching on the midsole, the tongue is flannel. There's just so much going on here, dude, just Look up these sneakers and check them out if you want to know more, they're wild. Let's move on now to 2020, where we'd see Cactus Jack contributing to the Nike Dunks craze. First with the Travis Scott and Nike SB Dunk Low. Picking back up Travis's hometown inspired cowboy aesthetic, these have the bandana pattern corduroy prominent on the upper with suede swooshes and swaths of sand and tan. Not to mention the literal rope of the laces, big cowboy vibes. Last thing, if you rip or cut off the bandana pattern on these, there is a repeating pattern of the Cactus Jack death metal logo. Later on in 2020, another Travis Scott dunk would cause massive hype. The Travis Scott PlayStation and Nike dunk low. It was announced that only five pairs would be made as prizes for winning a raffle on Travis Scott's website. And even after the raffle ended, it took a while for any details or real photos of these to surface from the owners. These might seem like all hype, but you gotta admit that this is a one of a kind collab. The Sony branding on the heel and the embroidered PlayStation logo make this sneaker special. But the translucent ice outsole with PlayStation on one foot and the katakana on the other, that's what makes this sneaker dope. Good luck finding a pair of these. The cheapest asking price on StockX is $60,000. Next up in 2020 is Travis's first Air Max, the 270 React Cactus Trails. After its initial announcement, multiple delays set this release back to late May when it retailed for $170 and like most Travis Scott releases, sold out immediately. As you can see, this silhouette is a departure from the usual style of sneaker that Travis had previously worked on in the past. I like some of the details like the blue purple pop of the lace lock and the wild heel tab that reads Cactus Jack but the sloppy yellow hand-painted layer over the midsole and air unit is a weird decision. It even comes with an attached disclaimer tag to say that the paint will come off if you wash a shoe or get it wet. Last big one for us to cover is the most recent Travis Scott Jordan 6, the British Khaki. This version dropped on April 30th of 2021, Travis's 29th birthday. The most noticeable thing that sets this color apart from the olives is the long haired suede upper. But there are a couple more differences. We've got the glow in the dark outsole that the olives had, but the British Khaki also has glow in the dark lace locks, heel spoiler, and tongues to match the outsole. Another new feature is the Travis Scott branding that can be seen through the translucent outsole. One dope detail is that the iconic ankle pocket contains an infrared lace lock which can be swapped out to match the infrared accents on the upper. At the time of recording this video, the Travis Scott and Fragment Jordan 1 is about to release for $200. This sneaker hasn't dropped yet, but it's one of the most exciting Travis Scott sneakers, uh, in my opinion. What do you guys think about these? I really like the lows, but the highs are also super dope. Leave it down in the comments below. On Air Max Day back in March, a story on the sneakers app teased the Travis Scott and Nike Air Max 1 Cactus Jack. This collection is going to include five different colorways and is supposed to drop during the 2021 holiday season. This is pretty exciting because it's not really like anything we've seen from a Nike and Travis Scott collab before. Pretty different from the Reacts even. Not only that, these look like a genuinely new take on the Air Max 1. I could imagine some Air Max heads being kind of salty about that though. All right, if you stuck around for that long, I think you're sick of Travis Scott sneakers. And to be honest, I do think that Nike is milking their partnership with Travis Scott. I mean, 
It's such a huge lift of sneakers in just a short amount of time, only four years since the first Travis Scott and Nike shoe. And obviously they, they've made a lot of dollars, but I don't, for me personally, I think it's too much. There are some dope moments, but I think they need, it's time for Travis Scott to get his own, uh, his own sneaker. I think that would be more interesting. But hey, if you wanna learn more about footwear and sneaker culture in general, I put together this playlist that me and my brother Nacho made uh, for you to check out. It's all the sneaker history videos that we've done in the past. We've done the original Jordan 1, we've done the Jordan 4, um, we've done the Jordan 11, we've also done like history on shoes like the Puma Suede. So go ahead and check that out, click on that, and I will see you over in those videos. Peace.